Hello, uh, welcome to Great Dalton. Today is part four of the station build, which will look at the final stages of completing this area of the layout. Uh, the car park, which will be based here, and the road, connecting this drop-off area to the town scene. Now with the road, I will actually be stopping here, as this small section here will be covered in another video. Before I can get started on this, there are a few little bits of preparation work I need to do. Due to this area of the layout being somewhat of a wasteland of uh, times when I've used this car park to paint things and glue things, it's come a bit rough. So I will need to sand all that down, smooth it out as we've got paint glue marks. I've got little bits stuck down. And there's some holes there from things I've drilled. Um, just a baseboard screw. I've got some static grass over here. So I need to sand all that down and smooth that out before I can get started on that. I also need to move these wires as over here will be a elevator shaft to get to this level here. So that needs to move and there'll be a pain display machine for the ticket for the uh, car park as well. Um, so we'll get on with that first and then we can actually make a start. I will add as a side note that all these wires here will be fine where they are as this row is just going to come above it so I can build the structure uh, to accommodate all these wires here you'll see where the car park stops and there'll be a retaining wall here which will support this road and that can just sit on top of all these wires with no issues of them getting in the way Well that's all the prep work done, I've just filled in all the holes, given it a good sand down and I've redirected these wires to go through the baseboard now as opposed to sitting on the surface so all that area is now free. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is just paint the car park surface in a sort of tarmac colour with some enamel. So the idea of the car park is these will be spaces and cars will come in through here and under the bridge which will obviously span this area here and there'll be a separate ramp over there somewhere for access from the road so all I need to do really is just paint all the lines and the direction arrows but first we'll get the surface done and I'm just using a standard enamel paint darkened down a bit I got this from my local model shop yeah quite a nice colour but it just needs to be darkened down a bit and then we can move on surface is all dry now so the next thing we're going to move on to is separating the line side from the car park. Um, the way I'll be doing that is just adding a small thin strip of some soil with some weeds and then there'll be a security fence. So I've got these ratio GWR station fencing kits which work well when spray painted in aluminium paint as a security fence and then some grass tufts. Um, along with my mix of soil which is just a couple of woodland scenic turfs mixed together earth and soil so we'll get on with that next and we'll move on Thank you. 
Security fence is all in. I've added some weeds with some soil down the side just to have that little bit of scenery in there. Just to, you'll never find a perfect station with no plants or weeds anywhere. So they will be planted in now. So the next thing to move on to will be the actual car park markings. Um, your basic station with lots of spaces really. There's not too much interest to it. Access to the station will be under this bridge here, which will obviously meet the road there. And then the ramp will be somewhere around here. So cars will come through here. This will be a two-way road. That two-way road will run the entire stretch of the car park down to the bottom and then there'll be spaces, several rows of spaces adjacent to that road for access to the spaces. Right over this end will be a small bit of pavement with the pay and display machines and an elevator shaft up to the drop-off area level. There'll also be some disabled spaces here and near the signal box area will be some staff car parking spaces. So the way I'm going to be doing all the spaces will be traditional method of frog tape and white paint. Um, I will be using some of the road markings like arrows and the disabled spaces from the kit I had left over from the drop off zone. So we'll get on with that next. This might take quite a while and I don't know how many spaces I'm going to be able to fit but it's a modern car park so it's going to be quite cramped to try and get as many cars in as possible. Maybe over 100 spaces, we shall see. I'll join you in a bit. So, all of the car park markings are now done. The layout of the car park is pretty simple. Access is via this road here. Cars then come onto a one uh, two-way road, which stretches the entire length of the car park. And then it'll take them around this small roundabout at the end, and then back round. So there's a fair few spaces here, but if this was realistic for a station this size, that's nowhere near a big enough car park to serve it. That would be ten times as big and pro probably multi-storey as well. But for all intents and purposes of this layout, it does a fair good representation. These spaces over here would be for staff. If I get some uh, markings just to put in front of that. And then we've got some more passenger car parking spaces over here. And then a the hatched area. Most of this was done with frog tape, the old traditional method. And then these T-junctions, the roundabout, the arrows, and this slow sign was done using the vinyls which I had left over from the um, drop-off zone markings, including the disabled parking spaces as well. 
Okay, so the last part of the actual car park to finish is just the details. There's not going to be too much as it will mainly be the cars. Whilst I've been waiting for these details to arrive, I have made this elevator shaft out of some brick sheet, just a bit of cardboard and some corrugated sheeting to take passengers up to the drop-off level. I may add a stairway up here as obviously that's not got the most capacity for uh, taking people up in a crowded car park but we'll see. So what I've got is I've got a floodlight just to light up this area here where the ticket machines will be. Got some double headed lamp posts one will be situated on each of these pavement areas to light up each um, group of parking spaces. I've got some lamp posts here some of these will be for the road and some of these will just sit down here behind this line lighting up the main car park roadway and we've got some light up cars and all this stuff is from layouts for you my favorite and my go-to supplier for anything engaged lighting wise they're a very good store i'm sure some of you know them uh, and then we've got a couple of double headed LED floodlights to light up this um, permanent way signal box network rail area. Um, just to got some people again. I always like to populate my layout with some some people. A bench, some bike racks, and then what these are are actually um, ticket machines for the station. But I'll paint them up as a pay and display machine, and they should be um, sighted in various locations across the station. So that'll be next thing on to do. Uh, we'll get on with this and then we'll get back to you. that's all the lamp posts now installed they're all wired into my 12 volt DC circuits there's one that's not working which is just one of these single lamp posts but we have a double lamp post for every block of um, parking spaces and then we've got the single lamp post to illuminate this road we've got one floodlight over there for that pain display area and the elevator and then we've got these two floodlights here to light up this uh, permanent way sort of area. So we'll get on with the rest of the details and then I'll get back to you. Right, so that's most of the details in. We've just got some people, <coughs> some bike racks, a bench, that would be a queue for the pay and display machine. Um, these of which I am currently painting. These are from PD models. Um, I've also installed the elevated road section. I uh, had a bit of a dilemma with this. I miscalculated where it actually lined up with. Um, initially, it was meant to be flush with this retaining wall, but in order to actually get the cycle path on, I've had to sacrifice the pavement, pavement, but in order to get the cycle path on, I've had to create a little ledge 
for it to overhang. Initially I was going to line this wall with some of these spare columns I had from the Metcalf retainer wall kits. But I guess that won't be happening now. So this road is really nothing interesting to it, it's just going to be the same as that road. It will just be a couple of cycle paths, a pavement on one side with some lamp posts. I've lined it with some brick sheets, the same as I've done with the drop-off zone for Metcalf. And then we're pretty much finished with this area, bar a few little details. So let's get on with the painting and the decorating of that road. And then we shall join you with the finished result. Well, here we are. The road is now completed and the car park is also finished. I've added the uh, paint display machines there with a little bit of a queue and then the same over the other side of the car park so not all the people have to queue for just two machines. I've added some lamp posts, some small details into this roadway here which is now all painted and decorated. Um, if anyone's thinking of using these double yellow lines by Scale Model Scenery, I would not recommend it. They are horrible to work with, incredibly fiddly. Um, I suppose they're worth the extra detail, but they're ever so frustrating. Um, so maybe just paint them or just forget yellow lines altogether. Allow your residents to park where they want. Um, I've pretty much populated the car park with every single Oxford diecast vehicle that I own. There's a lot of repeats as they only have Jaguars, Land Rovers and Minis um, they're the only modern cars they do really uh, they see several vans and older vehicles but in terms of modern cars they've not got a great selection got some older cars here like Cortina that smart car is from Bock or Bosch the German manufacturer it's slightly out of scale at 168 but it's a bit, of, a bit more of a variety of cars we've got a uh, Delivery man there, that's from a Gage Master set. Same with him, he's from that same set. And then just the usual commercial vehicles, ambulance, fire engine, and of course the transit van. I'll just to show you what this entire area looks like now in the dark. So you can get a uh, nice shot of what everything looks like, all lit up. Obviously it does look a little strange with all the lamp posts on and none of the cars have lights bar a couple in the drop off zone and in this car park. I may add a couple more if I feel like it. They're quite cheap from layouts for you at £3 per car 
and they do add a bit to the scene. Um, they are obviously not particularly detailed cars, but they have lights, so I suppose that's where the detail is. So yeah, we've got a nicely lit station with all the canopies. Got some nice zoomed in shots there of platform one. If it'll focus, yep. Does look quite realistic. And then got a nicely lit car park to keep your car secure. Over the drop off zone, there's a lot of lighting as you'd expect in a station sort of um, courtyard or whatever it was good. And then we've got this road with some lights. So, yeah, it looks quite good in the dark. As with the station drop off zone, I still need to pop some capping on these walls just to cover up the, uh, the card as it looks a bit unrealistic. I'll do that at another stage and I'm going to finish that video here really. Um, so yeah that concludes not only part 4 of the um, station build but actually this entire series of uh, following the construction of the station. We started off with the platforms and the canopies which was really popular, um, a lot more popular than I expected it would be. And we moved on to the station drop off zone, station building and then we finished with this car park and the road connecting that drop-off zone to, well, nearly the town scene over here. So I hope you've enjoyed this mini-series. I'll be signing off now. Um, I'll leave you with a few photos of in and around the whole station. <coughs> um, a couple of my favourites from the uh, canopies. And then we'll join you next time for another update, probably, and a big old running session. So thank you for watching, and bye-bye.